Yo what's going on guys then my here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and today we're going to be talking about the merge sort sorting algorithm so this is one of the most important algorithm to understand because so far in this tutorial series if you've been following the entire data structures course we've covered three different sorting algorithms that is the bubble sort the insertion sort and the selection sort and this algorithm is pretty different when it comes to the entire working so it's really important that you pay attention and focus thoroughly on this entire video having said that before even we start off with this merge sort sorting a quick disclaimer a quick notice a quick suggestion make sure you watch this video completely in one stretch and with your full concentration so do not get distracted please keep your phones aside put them on silent use your phones isolate yourself do whatever you can but make sure you watch this video in one go in one stretch till the end and only then i can assure you that you will understand this algorithm very easily now having said that the second thing that you need to know is you need to know what is a recursive function and the concept of recursion and if you don't know what you can do is you can quickly pause this video i have a separate video on recursive function using c++ as well as java go and watch the c++ one because ultimately we are going to use c++ programming i'll link the video in the description or you can see a card on the top right corner watch that because that is kind of like a prerequisite to understand this merge sort sorting and then you're good to go okay so enough of the introduction talk let's start with the merge sort sorting algorithm we'll divide this video in two parts this first part that is this first video we'll talk about a little bit of theory and then we will jump into the algorithm that is the most important part because that's where we will see how the algorithm works step by step we will dry run the entire algorithm using diagrams and that's where you'll understand everything in detail so let's cover quick theory on this so merge sort is a divide and conquer algorithm now so far as i mentioned we've covered three algorithms that is the selection sort the insertion sort and the bubble sort sorting algorithms but merge sort is pretty different when it comes to the way it works now merge sort works in a way of divide and conquer methodology so what is this divide and conquer so this divide and conquer technique or methodology is a way in algorithms wherein a larger problem is divided into smaller problems or smaller sub problems and those smaller sub problems are easily conquered or easily solved and then they are clubbed back to get the final result so what does this help us do so this helps us in achieving high level of efficiency and if you see the last point the time complexity of this merge sort sorting is o of n log n now if you seen the first three sorting algorithms in this course that is the selection insertion and bubble sort the time complexity for those three algorithms was n square that is o of n square by the way if you don't know what is time complexity if you do not understand what is algorithmic analysis i have two separate videos in this playlist which talks in detail and those two videos are also important you can watch them later on but what i am trying to say is those three algorithms that is the selection bubble and insertion sort are very inefficient because of this time complexity and over here merge sort has this complexity of n log n which is supposed to be very efficient compared to o of n square okay and this divide and conquer methodology is what makes this time complexity much more efficient and that's why merge sort is one of the most efficient sorting algorithms now merge sort is not the only one which uses divide and conquer methodology in this tutorial series if you've seen we've seen binary search algorithm which is a searching algorithm not a sorting algorithm but even binary search uses divide and conquer because over there we were dividing the entire array or entire list into two parts and we were only searching that part where the value that we want to find out fall into that range okay so the prerequisite was that the array or the list has to be sorted already and only then binary search works but that was a very efficient algorithm compared to the linear search as well because it was using the divide and conquer methodology so what happens in merge sort so in in general theoretically what happens is it divides the input array into two halves and calls itself for the two halves recursively and then merges the two sorted halves so this point is very important to understand what is happening here is the merge sort algorithm divides the input array into two halves and then it calls itself again on the two separate sub arrays recursively till we have only one element in the sub array and then it merges the two sorted halves back together so when we divide an array let's say we have a array of size 4 what this algorithm is going to do it's going to divide it into two halves first okay we get two separate sub arrays then we are again going to apply merge sort recursively so this sub array is going to be divided into single single elements or single single sub arrays again 
and ultimately now obviously we cannot divide this further right you cannot divide a sub array having only one element so now what we will do we will merge it back again into two and two pieces like this and then again this is merged back but when we are merging it back again that is where the sorting happens okay so that's the overall concept or overall working of course we will see in very detail what happens at every call at every recursive call also but this is a little bit of diagrammatic sneak peek that I wanted to give you. Moving on, there is a separate merge function which is used for merging the two halves. So as I mentioned, when you are merging the smaller sub arrays back again, a separate merge function is called which is what does the actual sorting also. So when you are merging it back, you cross check with each other which is the smaller one and appropriately place it. So let's say if it was 9, 7. So here's our array, right? So we have 9, 7, 3, 6. So we have 9, 7, 3, 6, again 9, 7, 3, 6. So when you're merging it back again, you can see that 9 is greater than 7. So 7 is smaller. So when you're merging it, 7 should come over here and 9 should come over here. So that logic is written in the merge function. Now we are going to see that merge function in detail also. But overall, this is what is happening. Okay. And if you are making some notes, you can note this theory down for your answers. You can note down the time complexity. This is important. This point is important. In fact, everything is important over here. So make a note of it. And now let's actually go ahead and see the four major points or the three major phases. That is the working of the merge sort sorting algorithm before we actually get into the algorithm. Okay. So as you can see on the screen, what I've written is this is the merge sort sorting algorithm. I've tried to write it in a function format in a C++ function kind of syntax. It's not exactly correct, but this is how the merge sort would look like. The first parameter is the array. So our array is going to be a static array of size 5. We'll hard code the size for simplicity purpose. This L is called the leftmost index. So the leftmost index of, of course, for the first time is going to be 0. And this R is the rightmost index. It can sometimes also be referenced as start and end, S and E. And we have different naming conventions. In fact, there is multiple ways to write this algorithm also when we actually implement it. But overall, these are the three different phases that happen. So inside this algorithm, you can see we have step one, step two, step three and step four. Step two and three are kind of clubbed together because it's the recursion phase. So overall, we have three phases. First is the division phase. The second is where the recursion happens. And the third one is merging it back together. Okay. So step number one, first, we have to find the middle point, obviously, to divide the array into two halves, right? So we have a simple formula. Middle is equal to leftmost index plus rightmost index divided by 2. So if you have this array, what would be the midpoint? We have 0 plus 4 divided by 2. So 4 by 2, it would give us 2. So this would be the midpoint. So this is where we divide. So obviously this is a odd sized array. So we will have two odd sub arrays. So this would be the first array and this would be the second sub array. So that's how the division will happen using this formula. Okay. So now this first step our first phase of division is done. We've got the midpoint. The second and third step is where we call merge sort again recursively. So you can see this is the same function which looks like this. However, only the difference is this merge sort is for the first half because we've calculated the midpoint. So what we're going to do, we're going to pass the array. We're going to pass the leftmost index as it is, which is L. But the rightmost index over here is not going to be R. It is going to be M, which is the midpoint that we just found out. And this is for the left sub array. And we again call merge sort recursively, which is for the right sub array also. So over here, we pass the same array, but now the left index is not going to be L. It's going to be M plus one. So we calculated M as two, right? So M plus one would be equal to three. Two plus one is three, right? So now this is the starting index that is left index for the second sub array. And the right index is obviously going to be the same. So, so far so good. So this is the phase where recursively the entire array will be divided into smaller sub arrays and this recursion will keep on continuing till we end up having only one single element in the smaller sub arrays. Okay. So there will be a condition which we will see as we move ahead where the recursion will stop and it will be like, okay, we cannot divide this entire smaller sub array, which has only one element into further two parts, right? We cannot divide that. So that's where the recursive merging will stop. And lastly, once the division will stop, we will call the merge function. So as I mentioned, you can see this merge function is a separate function, which will take the smaller sub arrays, which are like size one now, once we've completely divided them into smaller chunks. And now we have to combine them back 
join them back into larger arrays so we have to build them from grounds up and when we are building them let's say it is 9 and 7 over here we have to make that comparison depending upon which is smaller 7 will come over here 9 will come over here and the same thing will happen for all the other smaller sub arrays when they are combining and again the intermediate level also let's say we have 7 9 and 3 6 over here right so so 3 and 6 came over here but when we are merging them back it will be as it is 3 and 6 and now we have to merge this also into a larger array of size 4 so now again comparison will happen 7 will be compared with 3 3 is smaller so 3 will come over here then we are only gonna check this one so now 6 will be compared with 7 6 will come over here and since we have exhausted this array then this array will be written as it is 7 and 9 because this is already sorted so I'll explain to you this merge logic again properly when we actually see the algorithm right now I'm just trying to give you an overview of it how the merge actually happens okay so three phases if you're making a note of this division recursion merging these are the four broad steps in written in proper English and a little bit of pseudocode kind of language you can note it down if you want to actually write an answer make a theory answer of it and now that you've got a little bit of overview of what exactly are the broader steps let's actually see the algorithm in the form of a proper pseudocode okay so as you can see on the screen on the left hand side we have the same merge sort sorting algorithm in the form of a little bit of pseudocode so the same four steps that i just explained to you in proper english are now written in little bit of code format types in a pseudocode format in stepwise and we have this pink condition which i will explain what is exactly happening when we actually run this and on the right hand side we have this tree structure wherein i am performing that division i've already written all the values but i'll explain how we are attaining or achieving that values so to understand this the best way let's actually try to implement this merge sort on this array so this is our array which is of size 5 so let's first call merge sort on this array okay let's give the very first merge sort call okay so as you can see I have written merge sort in short form ms which stands for merge sort basically and the call is looking like we are passing the array arr the left index is 0 obviously and the right index is 4 okay now what we do we go inside this function let's dry run it step by step okay coming over here the first condition that we check is if l less than r so what is l over here l is 0 what is r r is 4 now obviously 0 is less than 4 which means this condition is true so this condition actually is for checking whether we are arrived at the smallest sub array which consists of only one element so when we arrive at this l and r is gonna be equal it's gonna be 0 and 0 only right and that's when this condition will become false so you'll see that when we actually move ahead also but I'm just trying to tell you in advance so this condition checks whether we have only one element in the sub array left if it is only one element this condition will become false and this recursive nature will stop but right now 0 is less than 4 it is true so hence we go inside this if block so the first thing that we do is we calculate the midpoint which is given by l plus r by 2 obviously over here 0 plus 4 by 2 which gives us midpoint of 2 so we've calculated 2 over here all right now what happens is the next step that is step number 2 is where we again call merge sort so this is a recursive call right so this is merge sort calling merge sort so first merge sort call was over here right now we are calling second merge sort on the leftmost array so what is the leftmost array it is going to be this in this case because what are the values that we are passing over here we are passing the array as it is the l value is passed as it is l is 0 only but now for the right value we are passing the newly calculated midpoint the midpoint that we calculated is 2 over here right so let me just write it 2 over here and that's what we are passing so now a second merge sort call is given by the first merge sort so let me just show it to you so this is the second merge sort call which is given for the left side of the sub array so we divided 973 and 62 into two sub arrays basically what we did is we are using the same array only we are not creating two separate arrays so when we implement this you'll understand that we are not going to create two separate arrays but we are just applying merge sort on a part of this same array okay that's what is actually happening but now since this first merge sort has given a call to second merge sort this first merge sort will actually go into a pause state right so i'll just do a sign of a pause symbol and it paused at step number two itself because over here it called second merge sort so let me just write it over here it paused at step number two 
So remember this because we are going to come back to this when we actually come outside the recursive functions slowly. So now what has happened is the first merge sort has given a call to second merge sort and in second merge sort we are passing ARR 0 and 2. So now again we will start this entire process because first merge sort is paused. So we have to calculate merge sort again for this second call. So let's pass these values again. We have the same array. We have passed 0 as the leftmost index. The rightmost index this time is 2. So again midpoint is going to be calculated. What is midpoint? L plus R by 2. This is 0 plus 2 by 2. So this time it is going to be 1. So here you can see I have written M equals to 1 already. So this step is done for the second merge sort. Now again we are calling merge sort and this time it is again on the left side for this sub array and the values that we are going to pass is the same array. The left is passed as it is which is L which is going to be 0 only. So 0 comma the M value now is going to be a new midpoint which we just calculated which is 1. So we are dividing this array into two parts like this. So leftmost sub array for this sub array is 9 and 7. So that's what is happening over here which you can see. And now again since another merge sort call is given by this second merge sort, this merge sort again will become paused. So let me just do a pause symbol over here. And this merge sort is again paused at step number 2 only. So let me write 2 over here. So first merge sort gave a call, recursive call to second merge sort. Now second merge sort is giving a recursive call to the third merge sort and it is going in the pause state. So let's see how the third merge sort looks. And this is how the third merge sort call looks like. Because we are applying merge sort right now on the leftmost side continuously. We are not still going to the third step of any of the merge sort calls because first all the merge sorts for the leftmost part will happen. And that's how the entire algorithm also progresses. So this is like a real world feedback or real world imagination or visualization of what exactly is happening at every step. So now we have passed 0 and 1. So again merge sort will be executed third time. So third merge sort will start executing because second is paused over here. So let's execute that. Now again L is passed as 0, R is passed as 1. Again if condition is checked is 0 less than 1? Yes it is true. So again we will go inside a new midpoint is calculated. This time it will be 0 plus 1 divided by 2 which is going to be 1 by 2 which is actually going to be 0 0.5 but obviously we don't have any index which has 0 0.5 as the index right. We do not have decimal point indexes. So this 0.5 will be truncated and we will have a new midpoint of 0. So new midpoint will be equal to 0. Again we will come to step 2 of the third merge sort. And here again we are giving a recursive call. So you can see this is becoming repetitive. Now array will be passed as it is. The L is going to be 0 and M is also going to be 0. So let's see how the fourth merge sort call looks like. So there you go. We've called a fourth merge sort and this third merge sort has again gone in the pause state because it has called fourth merge sort, right? So again third merge sort also paused at second step and third has given a call to fourth merge sort. So so far you are understanding, right? Every merge sort is giving a recursive call to itself and it is going in pause state. The reason why first, second and third are going in pause state is because they have still not finished all the instructions in the function. So you can see all the merge sorts that were giving recursive call have been paused at second step only. But you can see we have third and fourth step also, which means this merge sort, this merge sort and, and this merge sort is still incomplete. It still has to execute the third step and fourth step, but that will only happen after the last recursive merge sort call completes itself. And now you can see the fourth merge sort call is happening. What we have passed is L as 0 and R as also 0 because midpoint that we calculated was 0. So let's see how this merge sort happens. So again this merge sort will start executing. We are passing L as 0 and R as 0. And now if you see we are checking if L is less than R. L is also 0 and R is also 0. Is 0 less than 0? No, this is false. So now this entire if statement will not execute. So that's why we are not calculating a new midpoint, right? You can see I have not written M over here, which means this entire merge sort will complete its execution. And now it will come back. When I say come back, where will the fourth merge sort come back? To the third merge sort, right? Because third merge sort called fourth merge sort. So when we will come back over here, what will happen? This third merge sort, which was paused, it will resume itself. So let me just erase this sign out and it had paused at step number 2. What was step number 2? If you come over here, third merge sort had paused at this state. Now this step is done. So it will come on the 
third step but again at third step you can see we are giving a merge sort call but this time it is on the right side or the right most sub part at this level at the third level so at third level we divided the array like this so left sub array has 9 and the right sub array has 7 so now we are applying merge sort on the right part because you can see we are passing the array we are passing m plus 1 what is m plus 1 at this level m is 0 so 0 plus 1 is gonna be 1 what is the rightmost value r is gonna be 1 only at this level so we are passing 1 and 1 so now a fifth merge sort call is given at this location for the right sub array at this level so let's see how that looks so again this third level merge sort has given a call to a fifth merge sort so again it will pause but this time it will pause at step number three so let me just write that over here again the third merge sort that is th number three merge sort has paused at step number three this time it has paused at step number three and a fifth merge sort call is given with the values of arr one and one so let's execute this merge sort so when we pass one and one obviously this condition again is going to be false because one is not less than one so that's why we did not calculate midpoint over here because this entire if block will not be executed so this complete merge sort will be completed because we are completely skipping this if block and that's the only thing we have over here so we will come outside this merge sort and now we will go back and where do we go back we will go back to the calling function the calling function is this third merge sort call which was paused at step number three so now it will again resume from step number three it's done with step number three and the last step now is the merge function at this level right and when we are talking about merge what we want to do we want to take these two sub arrays and we have to take them and merge them at this level but when we are merging it we also want to compare which one is the smaller one and we want to sort them accordingly so what will happen in reality during the merge call or during this fourth step 9 and 7 will be compared with each other and depending upon which one is smaller we will have 7 over here and we will have 9 over here because 7 is smaller than 9 because ultimately we are using sorting algorithm we are sorting this in ascending order right so 7 and 9 have been transferred over here okay so we just completely did one complete branch and if you observe now what has happened is this third merge sort call which was doing the step number four of merging has completed itself it will come outside this function and this third merge sort will be completely over right so let me just erase out everything because it's become a little cluttered over here so the third merge sort call that is this one has completed all the four steps but remember that the third merge sort was called by second merge sort so since third is done it will go back to the second merge sort which was you can see is paused at step number two that's why i've written two over here right and there's a pause sign over here so now we will resume the merge sort at step number two that is the second merge sort and resume it from step number three so we had paused it over here now we will come one level down and call a merge sort for the rightmost part at this level now at this level you can see we have divided nine and seven which is the left branch which we actually just sorted and we also have the right branch over here so for the right branch we have not yet applied the merge sort that's why we are applying it at this level that is step number three so how do we apply merge sort at step number three for this level we will pass the same array we will pass m plus one what is m over here at this second level m is one so we will pass one plus one which is two what is r over here at this level it is also two right so a sixth merge sort call will be given from this second merge sort so let's see how that looks so there you go you can see this is the sixth merge sort call which is given from second merge sort right and again this will go in a pause state the second merge sort will go in a pause state but it will be at the third step this is where it has paused now the second merge sort and now the sixth merge sort is executing again we are passing two and two so when we execute this merge sort we are passing two and two two is not less than two so this entire if block will not be executed over here so we will directly come back we will come back to the calling function which is the second merge sort i know it is getting a little cluttered but i hope now you are basically understanding the pattern of recursion that is happening so we've come back to step number two or second merge sort now again it will resume so it will resume from step number three only because we had paused it at step number three this is where we had paused so lastly only merge step is left and at level two at this level 
we have divided 9 and 7 and 3. So we have to merge 9 and 7 and 3. But over here we have already sorted 7 and 9 in the lower steps. So the merging is actually going to happen between 7, 9 and 3. Right? And the comparison again will happen which one is smaller. So we will check 7 with 3. Is 7 less than 3? No. 3 is less than 7? Yes. So 3 will come over here first. So let me write 3 over here. Of course I will explain this merge, how this merging happens in a minute. Right now I am just giving you an overview. So 3 will come over here from this and this will be exhausted and then 7 and 9 can be written as it is over here because it is already sorted, right? So let's write that. So 7 and 9 comes over here and now you can see that the left part is kind of sorted. We have a sorted sub array. The entire sub branch that is this branch is 379 which is in a sorted order. Now similarly the second merge sort will get over because it has executed its fourth in instruction. We were at this level. Who had called the second level? The first merge sort which has also been paused at step number two, right? So now second will go back to step number one. That is the very first merge sort. Where was the first merge sort paused? At step number two, which is this step. So now it will move to step number three and step number three is applying merge sort on the right side which is the right side at this level, we have 6 and 2, which is this side. So now a 7th merge sort call is going to happen because 6th was over here. Let's see that. So this is how the 7th merge sort call will look like. And again, the first merge sort at this level will go pause at step number 3. So let's do that. If you have a pen and paper, you can actually draw along with me for the best understanding. So merge sort number 1 is now paused at step number 3. And it has called a 7th merge sort. That's why it is paused. The seventh merge sort will be having the values of ARR 3 and 4. So where do we get this 3 and 4? Because the first merge sort has called this third step. What is the third step? You are passing array as it is this array. M plus 1. What is M over here? At first level M is 2. So 2 plus 1 is 3. What is R over here? R is 4. So 4 is passed as it is and hence the call 3 and 4. Now over here the midpoint is again calculated because we have passed 3 and 4. Is 3 less than 4? Yes, it is true. So again, division is going to happen. We have to split 6 and 2 into separate sub arrays. So that's why we calculate midpoint. So the midpoint is given by L plus R by 2. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 by 2 is 3.5, which is actually going to be 3 because we don't have an index with 3.5. So this is the midpoint itself. So that's how we're going to split it. We've split it. Now we will call merge sort again on the left side which is this side. So again, 7th merge sort is going to go in pause state at step number 2, right? So at this state, the 7th merge sort is paused and it has given a call to another merge sort, which is 8th merge sort, which looks something like this. And over here, we've passed array. The left value we've passed as it is. What was the left value over here? It is 3. So we've passed it as it is in the array. But the right value that we've passed is the new midpoint that we calculated. What was the midpoint that we calculated? 3. So we've passed 3 comma 3 over here. Right? So continuing or calling this merge sort again, we will pass 3 comma 3 over here. This time 3 is not less than 3. Hence this entire if block will not be executed. So that's why we've not calculated midpoint over here. We are left with only one single sub array element. So this merge sort will be done with the execution. It will go back to the calling function which is the seventh merge sort. 7th merge sort had been paused at step number 2, right? Now it will resume. So let's erase this. 7th merge sort was paused at step number 2. It will move on to step number 3. Now step number 3 is another merge sort call for the right part. So we applied merge sort on the left part. Now we have to apply merge sort on the right part. So this is how the merge sort call on the right part looks. We are passing ARR 4 and 4. Because we are passing the same array, we are passing M plus 1. M is 3. What is 3 plus 1? 4. So we will pass 4. That's why the left index is passed as 4 and the right index is going to be as it is which is 4 only over here. So 4 and 4 is passed. Obviously when 4 and 4 is going to be passed, 4 comma 4, 4 is not less than 4. This is wrong or this is false. So this entire if block will not be executed. So the merge sort will return to the calling function over here which is the 7th merge sort. Now 7th merge sort was actually paused at step number 3. Since step number 3 is a merge sort call to the right array, 
which is actually done it will resume so just erase this and it will resume from step number three and it will move to step number four now at step number four what is happening merging so at this level what is the merging that has to happen we have to merge six and two so when we are going to merge them back we will compare so that will happen in this merge function as i mentioned i will discuss this merge function in detail but what will happen we will compare six with two which is the smaller one two so two has to come over here and six has to come over here so that swapping will happen over here and now we will have two and six okay so this is the fourth step for the seventh merge sort call and after this obviously this entire merge sort will be done which means this merge sort is also done so who had called this merge sort it was this one you can see this arrow so now we will come back from seventh merge sort to the first merge sort had given it a recursive call where was step number one that is where was the first merge sort paused at step number three what is step number three step number three is this merge sort call that is the rightmost merge sort so now we will do the merge and this is the last merge wherein you can see at the top level now we only have to merge three seven nine and two and six at this level right how will the merging happen again comparisons will happen with three and two which is smaller between three and two two right so let me just write it over here in between somewhere i know things got a little cluttered so comparison will happen between three and two which is the smaller one two so two will come in the first place okay and this block will be eliminated eliminated or the iterator or the index that is keeping a track of this will be incremented that will happen in merge function and i will explain to you in detail the second comparison will again happen with three and six which one is smaller three so three will come over here and this block will be eliminated or the variable that is keeping a track of this index will be plus plus or incremented so now comparison will happen between seven and six which one is smaller six so six will come over here and this will be incremented so lastly we are left with seven and nine which is already sorted so we will copy them as it is seven and nine and there you go you can see this is the final output we are getting in a separate array we will store it in a temporary array and then transfer it back into our original array so nine seven three six two which is not sorted in any order will be sorted in two three six seven nine in a ascending order so this is the entire merge sort sorting algorithm wherein we saw step by step how the recursion is going on how the division is happening how the merge sort is calling on itself and ultimately how the merge is happening now one last thing that i have to explain over here is how exactly is this merge happening right because when we are coming or building back from the smaller sub arrays that is 9 and 7 some comparison has to happen some logic is supposed to be written which says that 9 is greater than 7 so 7 has to come first right so that algorithm or that logic is written in merge so now let's see how this merge happens okay okay so as you can see on the left hand side i have written the entire merge function so what was looking as just a fourth step in the merge sort algorithm when we actually see what is exactly happening so these all things happen and don't worry this is not actually complex this is just a little lengthy but it is very easy to understand we will understand it step by step so this is the complete merge function which has the logic where the comparison happens where the sorting happens and the merging happens okay so on the right hand side what i have modified is i have written the entire merge sort diagram as it is and we are assuming that we've arrived at this step that is 379 and 26 which means merging has happened at this step and merging has also happened at this step and now we are only left with one merging so if i explain to you one merge function obviously the same thing is going to apply at the smaller levels also so i don't need to explain to you over and over again otherwise it would be a waste of time so if you just understand one time it is the same thing that applies at every smaller step when we are doing the merging back okay so when we are merging back from 9 and 7 to 7 and 9 merge is called again when we are merging 7 9 and 3 again merge is called and then we are finally merging the two main sub arrays into the final array so again merge is called so if i explain to you for one time everything applies the same for all the smaller merge calls okay all right so how do we merge 3 7 9 and 2 and 6 back together in a way that we get the final result as 2 3 6 7 9 we want a sorted array right so this is the result that we want to achieve so we do this using a concept called two finger approach or two pointer approach that's what it is called but what actually it means is we keep a track of pointers which actually keep a track of this index 
so we keep a track of index of the left sub array and we keep a track of the index of the right sub array and we create a temporary array so this is like a temporary array and obviously it will also have indexes right so let me just take it a little down so obviously this temporary array will also have indexes so we keep a track of this index also so we have three different variables which will keep a track of the index of the left sub array the index of the right sub array and the index of this temporary array okay so let's actually apply this merge algorithm or merge function which is the fourth step of the merge sort algorithm on these two sub arrays so when we do that when we are at this level when we are at this level we have to merge this sub array and this sub array right that is this one and this one so at that level what do we have the values of we have the array we have 0 4 we also have the midpoint as 2 in the merge call what do we need we need the array we need the left we need the midpoint we need the right part or the right index we have all of them over here so we pass them as it is we pass the array arr okay we pass left index which is 0 so at this level the left index is 0 obviously at the smaller levels the left index will remain the same the right index will keep on changing and on the right hand side the left index will change okay so at this level we have 0 and 4 so we've passed 0 we've passed 4 so let me actually write it down over here itself in a proper way okay so we've written l equals to 0 m equals to 2 r equals to 4 the left index is 0 coming from over here the midpoint that we've calculated at this stage at this level is 2 and the right index is 4 okay now as i mentioned we are going to keep a track of the indexes of the left array the right array and the temporary array that we create so we need three variables to keep a track of it so these are the actual pointers they are not really c++ pointers okay so don't get confused that these are actual pointers these are just variables which keep a track of these indexes and i'll tell you why we keep a track of these indexes we'll need them for comparison purpose so we say i equals to l l is the leftmost index right so i is equal to l so l is 0 so i is going to be 0 for the first time j equals to m j is equal to m plus 1 it's not m it's m plus 1 what is m midpoint is 2 we've calculated midpoint as 2 so j becomes 2 plus 1 which is 3 and k again becomes l which is 0 so k becomes 0 okay so these are the three pointers now if you observe i equals to 0 is gonna be the first index position for the left sub array j equals to 3 is gonna be the first index of the right sub array so this is the right and this is the left okay so we've got i pointing to the very first index position of the left sub array we've got j pointing to the very first index of the right sub array so what is this k doing so k is gonna be pointing to the temporary array so k is this i is gonna be this i know it is a little cluttered but i hope you are getting it and j is gonna be equal to this so this is how we initialize things at step number one Step number two, obviously, we are going to create the temporary array and you can create temporary array over here also at the first step, but K is going to be keeping a track of this temporary array. Okay, we create a temporary array. The third step is we are using a while loop. Now we want to check which value is smaller in either of the array. So what we are checking, we are checking the first element in the left sub array with the first element in the right sub array. And depending upon which one is smaller, we are going to transfer it in the temporary array, right? So we need a condition which will iterate to 3, 7, 9 and 2 and 6. Now you can see that this is a odd setting, right? Odd setup, which means that left sub array has one element extra compared to the right sub array. So it is highly possible that either of the one sub array gets exhausted first, which means let's say if the right sub array gets exhausted first, all the elements in the left can be directly copied as it is and vice versa now if it doesn't make sense let's just actually apply this so the condition is while i is less than equal to m i is the iterator for left sub array and i over here is 0 m is actually equal to 2 you can see m is equal to 2 so for the left sub array what are the valid indexes 0 1 and 2 you cannot go to 3 right because left sub array is only comprising of three elements so that's why this first condition is to be in the left sub array limits that is the index limits so this condition will restrict the while loop to iterate only in the left sub part but then we also have a and clause which says and j less than equal to r so what is j j is 3 
विच इज द स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट ऑफ द राइट सब एरे एंड जे कैन आई ट्रेड बिटवीन थ्री एंड फोर ओनली दीज आर द टू वैलिड इंडेक्सेस फॉर द राइट सब एरे वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ आर आर इज फोर सो दैट्स वाई वी आर कीपिंग अ ट्रैक ऑफ बोथ द इंडेक्स रेंजेस यूजिंग दिस कंडीशन सो देर इज अ एंड क्लॉज इन बिटवीन बिकॉज इट इज हाईली लाइकली और हाईली पॉसिबल दैट वन एरे विल गेट ओवर फर्स्ट दैट इज वी विल ट्रांसफर ऑल द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ वन एरे इन टू द टेम्पररी एरे एंड देन वी कैनॉट गो फर्दर इन दैट एरे राइट वी कैनॉट मेक एनी फर्दर कंपेरिजन सो दैट्स वाई दिस वाइल लूप और कंडीशन इज यूज यूल अंडरस्टैंड मोर एज वी एक्चुअली ड्राई रन दिस सो लेट्स ड्राई रन इट सो इनिशियली ऑब्वियसली आई इज जीरो एंड जीरो इज ऑब्वियसली लेस देन एम एम इज टू करेक्ट सो आई इज जीरो एम इज टू वॉट इज जे जे इज थ्री and what is r r is 4 so this is less this is less both conditions are true because there is a and clause both have to be true and since both of them are true we go inside this while loop so this is step number 3 inside the while loop we have step number 3.1 and 3.2 now this is where the actual comparison is happening okay so what is this comparison happening so for the first time we are checking if arr of i is less than equal to arr of j what is i i is 0 so arr of i is arr of 0 which means this element is 3 less than equal to arr of j what is j j is 3 what is arr of j this element is 3 less than 2 we are checking if over here is 3 less than 2 over here obviously it is not less 3 is not less than true so the if block is not executed right so these two steps will not be executed we will go to the else part in the else part what we do since we've now achieved the fact that 3 is not less than 2 obviously 2 is less than 3 so we will say temp of k equals to arr of j so we've determined that from the left array and the right array 3 is greater than 2 which means 2 is smaller so 2 has to come first in the temporary array so we are saying temporary array of k now k is 0 we started k with 0 so temp of 0 that is at this location we want arr of j which is 2 so 2 will be transferred over here so i'll write 2 over here now look at this next step which says j++ and k++ so what did we do over here now k will point to the next temporary location because the first location is filled so obviously k will become 1 over here so let's make k as 1 similarly we will also do j++ because we have utilized this location of the right sub array we don't need to go over here so j has to increment to 4 So J is three. When we do J plus plus, J will also become four. So let's do that. So J has become four. So doing that change over here also. So J now points to four. Okay. So this is the two steps that is if and else inside the while loop. So once we complete the else part, we will again go to the start of the while loop. Obviously, because while loop will keep on executing till the inner condition is true. So let's again evaluate the inner condition now. So again, second time we are checking is i less than equal to m. What is i? i is zero. What is m? m is as it is. M and l and r are not going to change. The only thing that are changing are the individual variables that are used to iterate through all the indexes, right? So m is going to be the same. M is actually going to be two only. What is j? J has now become four. What is r? R is also four. Now let's see if the conditions, both the conditions are true. Is is zero less than two? Yes, it is. So this condition is true. Let's see the second condition. What is the second condition? And and j less than equal to r. So four is not less than four, but it is equal to four. So this also condition is true, right? Because it has to be less than or equal to. So this two conditions both again are true. And now we again go inside the while loop. Now again a comparison is made. If arr of i is less than equal to arr of j. So now what we are comparing? We are comparing arr of i. What is I I is zero, so ARR of zero is three, right? So we are again over here only for the left sub array. For ARR of J, J has become now four, so J is pointing to this location now because this is already transferred. So now we are comparing between three and six. So you can see there is a pattern going on. There is a comparison now. So now three is compared with six. Now obviously ARR of I, which is three. Is less than error of j. Error of j this time is six, so three is less than six. So that's why now this if block will be executed, and inside this now we are saying temp of k is equal to error of i. So since the element in the left array is smaller, we want that first to go in the temp array. So now three will be transferred over here. So temp of k, what is k? 
k is 1 we were at this location k was pointing over here and not at zeroth location so 3 will be going over here now we say i plus plus instead of j plus plus that we are doing in else we are doing i plus plus so now i becomes 1 over here and again we increment the k because the second position is occupied so k will now point to 2 so k becomes 2 okay now since if block is executed the else will not be executed either if will execute or else will execute right so now i has become 1 right so i will not point to this first location i will point to this location i has become 1 so you can see the first two are done now we have left with 7 and 9 in the left array and 6 in the right array so now let's see what is happening so we come at the end of the while loop because if is executed else will not execute again we will come at the start to check the while condition so according to the while condition what is the condition is i less than equal to m i is become 1 m is obviously going to be 2 only so 1 is less than equal to 2 this is true what is j j has become 4 4 is less than equal to 4 only because r is also 4 again it is true so we will go again inside again a checking is done arr of i what is arr of i arr of 1 arr of 1 is 7 is 7 less than or equal to arr of j what is arr of j j is 4 so arr of j is 6 is 7 less than equal to 6 no 7 is not less than equal to 6 7 is greater than 6 right so if block will not be executed we will go to else block in the else block what we've determined is 6 is smaller than 7 so we want 6 first so 6 will be transferred over here we will say temp of k equals to arr of j because we want the value in the right sub array that is arr of j to go in the temporary array first so 2 3 6 is happened over here we are saying j plus plus and we are saying k plus plus so j will be incremented to 5 and k will be incremented to 3 5 and 3 so now k will be pointing over here and j has completely exhausted j has become 5 okay so else block is done we will come at the end of the while loop again go at the start to check the while loop conditions now let's check the conditions so now if you compare i is obviously 1 1 is less than equal to m which is 2 now j has become phi now phi is not less than equal to r which is 4 phi is obviously greater than 4 so now we have completely exited out of this step number 3 this entire while loop will stop executing and we come on the fourth and fifth step so since we've exited this while loop if you observe right now in the temporary array we still have two elements to be filled and both of them are only from the left array right because the right array elements are already in place in the temporary array which means that this right array is exhausted so you can see that when this while loop stops executing we are still left with two elements but both of them are from the left array so that's why what we can do we know that 7 and 9 are already sorted because when we were merging when we are calling merge function at this location also the same merging was happening and ultimately we resulted in 3 7 9 so this is already sorted so we can directly transfer them as it is right we know that but when will we know that when we actually exit this while loop and when we are still left out with some elements so now the fourth and fifth while loop are only checking whether there are some elements left in left array or right array and if any one of the array is exhausted first the second array elements can be directly copied as it is because they are already sorted so that's the logic for this while loop and this while loop now any one of this while loop will only run because one is already exhausted one one part or one sub array is already exhausted so let's see if this while loop runs what is the condition over here is i less than equal to m i is 1 okay what is m m is 2 which means this while loop will execute this condition is true and this determines that elements from the left array are left out and since we know that they are already sorted 7 and 9 is already sorted right 7 comes first 9 comes next we can directly copy 7 over here and we can directly copy 9 over here so that's why you can directly say temp of k equals to arr of i so at this step what is i i is pointing to 1 so temp of k what is temp k k is pointing to 3 third location so 7 is directly transferred over here i plus plus happens and k plus plus happens i becomes 2 k becomes 4 so k points to the last element i points to 2 which is this so second time i becomes 2 is 2 less than equal to 2 yes it is equal to 2 so this again while loop will execute and 9 will be transferred over here 
when we come on the step number 5 we say while j less than equal to r j was become 5 over here you can see is 5 less than equal to the right value which is 4 no so this while loop will obviously not execute and anyways we know that we've exhausted the values from the right sub array we've already transferred them to the temporary array so no point in executing this while loop so that's why this while loop will not execute now one last thing is left if you observe 2 3 6 7 9 we've already got the sorted temporary array but this is stored in a temporary array in temp so the sixth step is where we use a for loop basic for loop to iterate through 0 to 4 that's the condition you can see int p equals to l what is l l is 0 p is less than equal to r which is 4 so 0 to 4 we are iterating from 0 to 4 and we say p plus plus and we are just copying all the elements from the temp that is this array 2 3 6 9 as it is into our original array which is arr which is 9 7 3 6 2 which is unsorted so when we copy everything over here finally we are left out with 2 3 6 7 9 and this is the final array which is sorted in ascending order so yeah this is where the merge will stop and this merge happens at every step okay so i explained to you merge of these two levels now merging will happen at this level also merging will happen at this level also because these two will be merged back over here these two sub arrays will be merged over here and merging will happen at this level also these, these two will happen over here now same logic will be used so if you want you can pause the video you can dry run this merge function for these smaller sub arrays also by going step by step through these steps you'll get the same results but this is how the entire merge sort sorting algorithm works and the merge function also specifically works so i hope you've got a very detailed idea about how the merge sort works by dividing then by recursively calling merge sort on individual sub arrays and then ultimately when we have only one single sub array element left we call the merge function to merge everything back together so yeah this was the entire merge sort sorting algorithm i know it got a little intense it got a little serious and very heavy but if you want you can watch this video again probably at a slow speed if you want go step by step take a pen and paper and debug these algorithmic steps yourself keep a note of all the you know values of all the variables at every step so that you understand what exactly is happening if you have a little confusion with recursion go watch the recursion video and yeah this is the entire merge sort sorting i know it got a lot cluttered over here in the diagram but when it comes to recursion yeah things get a little intense and complicated so i hope this visual diagram helped you out with understanding the merge sort sorting algorithm and if you've understood this merge sort please give this video a like it took a lot of efforts actually this is probably like the fourth or fifth video take that i'm doing and i would highly appreciate if you give it a like if you've understood let me know in the comments if you have any queries i will try to resolve them as well i will share some theory information in the video description on our official page also if you want and some more additional links about divide and conquer and whatnot so yeah that's it for this video guys hope you like this hope you understood the merge sort sorting algorithm and see you guys in the next video peace